Hi, this is Abhilash and we are going to see a different problem today. So, 1926 lead code, nearest exit from entrance in maze. So, we are given an M into N maze, zero indexed with empty cells, represented with the help of dots and walls are represented with the help of plus sign. We are also given the entrance position where we are at in that matrix in the maze. For example, here we are at 1, 2. And this denotes the row and the column. In one step, we can move up, down, left, and right. So uh, only these four positions we can move. So at each step, the distance is incremented by one. And we have to find the nearest exit. For example, if this person is at 1, 2, the nearest exit is 0, 2 because that is a boundary location. And from there, that person can access. So return the number of steps in the shortest path from the entrance to the nearest exit. Or minus one if no such path exists. So to frame this problem, so we can use a BFS, breadth first search traversal in this case. Uh, the idea behind this is to check if the points are inside the matrix at each and every step. The second check is uh, check if the current point that is the xy coordinate or the row column and the matrix is a terminating point. Okay. And we have to return the minimum distance. So we have to update a distance matrix. Distance matrix. So uh, for this, we are going to create some functions. So first, let us write this particular function. We are going to return a BFS function. We're going to pass the arguments maze and entrance. So for creating this function, we need some helper functions as well, which we'll be looking into um, uh, in, in later. So let us pass in the arguments. So we have the entrance po position, which is a vector of two size, I think so, a vector of size two one and two in this case, okay. And we have this particular uh, character maze. So since we can move uh, up, down, left and right. So in this case, we have to create the corresponding X, Y coordinates. So for that, we use two vectors. So one is a vector of U, so minus one, one, 0, 0. And the second case is going to be uh, a vector for the y coordinate 0, 0, minus 1, 1. Right? Because this signifies the x and the y coordinates. x and y coordinates for, uh, for, you know, uh, for moving. For moving. So this will allow us to move to different locations. In the next case, we are also going to initialize a distance matrix. So this distance matrix is going to be the dimensions of the maze. So for that, let us extract the maze dimensions um, uh, first. This will only help us to reduce the code size. So in this case, uh, the M and N. So M over here and um, let's say vector of int n and let us initialize this entire distance matrix with minus one. So this is the distance matrix which we will be updating and will be returning. So the individual point. So in this case, um, and also since we are running a BFS, we have to use a queue. So this queue is going to be um, a, a pair, right? Because we need the x, y coordinates at each time in the queue x, y coordinates at each time in the queue. So um, we first in queue, we first create the queue. And uh, this will be our uh, queue. And let us try to um, in queue the first point that is the entrance. So for that, let us write an x coordinate that is the entrance zero. Okay, so I wrote the zero here by mistake. So entrance zero. 
So let us write this. So the entrance x is equal to zero and int y, the entrance is going to be one. So now that we have the entrance coordinates, we are going to push that back in the queue. So q dot push. We could have used another vector with the help of m place. So same thing. Um, and now we have to write some helper functions. Also one thing, we have to update the distance as zero for x and y, because we have to update the distance, starting distance. So x and y equal to zero. So once this is done, uh, let us write some helper functions. So this helper functions will be Boolean types. So first function is going to check whether the point is inside the matrix or inside the maze. So let us take the int x and int y, int m and int n. So if x greater than or equal to zero, that means let's say if x is from here to here, zero to n minus one, and y will be zero to n minus one and x is less than m and y is greater than or equal to zero and y is less than m, n. So I'm going to return it as true, else I'm going to return it as false. This is a very standard method uh, for checking the coordinates in a BFS, in any BFS approach. So check if x comma y is in maze. Also, we need another helper function which will check if uh, we are at the exit, that means the terminating point. So int x comma int y, int m and int n. So first for this, we'll be checking whether any of these coordinates are zero or the term or the terminals. That means m minus one or m n minus one in the case of x and y respectively. So if x equal to zero or y equal to zero or x double equals to m minus one or y double equals to n minus one. So this will make sure that we are at the terminal conditions and we can return the rest as false. So check if the item, that means x comma y is at end. So once this helper functions are set up, we can iterate through the BFS loop. So while the queue is not empty, which is used in the standard BFS loop, so uh, we'll be uh, taking out the first element. So remove the top of the queue. So for that, let us take the top of the queue, which is Q dot front. And since this is a pair, the starting condition will be temp dot first. And the column, that means the Y coordinate will be temp dot second. So this is clear. We also have to pop that particular element. So popping it. Now we have to do certain checks. So the first check is if um, the person has reached the end. So how will we check that? We can check if the distance is not zero. So this ensures that that particular node has been visited or that particular coordinate has been visited. So let us write over here as distance R comma C, okay. C as not equals to zero. So this indicates that that particular node uh, has a certain non-zero value as the distance. So inside it, we are going to check if the um, person is at maze end. So we are going to use this check function that we created, the check exit function that we created, check exit r comma c comma m comma n and we are going to return that particular distance because we have to return that distance. Okay, now once this, this is our terminating condition. At each step, this will be checked. Now for the rest, we have to iterate over the U and V coordinates, right? So for that, we have to use some kind of iterator, I k equal to zero, k less than u dot size, k plus plus. So we are going to add temp x with r plus u of k. So this signifies, um, this signifies, this signifies the updated x and y values. 
So similarly, in temp y is going to be our c plus v of k, right? Now we have to perform certain checks. So what are these checks? Uh, so the first check is uh, we have to check if the temp x and temp y are in the maze, right? Which can be done with the help of this check-in matrix function. Okay. The second check is going to be if maze of temp x and temp y is let's say dot. Okay, because this signifies that it is a movable location. If if it were plus, then we could not move. The third case, distance of temp and temp x and temp y, that means the updated x and y values, should be uh, should should be minus one because this indicates that unvisited unvisited coordinate or, or unvisited node in a graph. So for this. Let us write this particular thing in a function in a if if statement. So check in matrix. So in this case, it will be temp x temp y and m comma n. Also, we have to check whether um, we have to check whether the maze temp x temp y double equals to yeah, single, uh, that is a dot. That means it is a movable location and the distance of temp x, sorry, uh, temp x and temp y double equals to minus one. So this signifies that this is an unvisited node. So in that case, what we're going to do, we're going to push that, that coordinate in Q and also we are going to update distance. So since at each step, we can move only one step up, down, left and right. So in that case, we have to keep that in mind. We have to increment that distance value by one only. So Q dot push temp X, temp Y also, and distance of temp X and temp Y should be distance of R comma C plus one because at each step we are moving at one unit and at the terminal stages if all uh, you know if if the person is not able to reach end then we return minus 1 as it is given in the question if the person is not able to reach the nearest exit we return it as minus 1 so if we run this function so um, let us try to run this particular piece of code using the bfs approach So in this case, uh, we have this temp y, uh, which is undeclared. So yeah. So this particular approach is done with the help of BFS. So let me see if all the brackets are met. Oh, I see that this is an uh, this bracket is also okay. This is also okay, and uh, okay. I returned it over here, so this should be returned outside of this particular bracket. Okay, so for this particular test case, this is running. Now, let us try with another test case. So, let's say this one. Um, and this is entrance is one comma zero. So one comma zero as it is shown in the figure over here, right? So it is already at the terminal position. So it can output either zero or it can output either two. But yeah, in the question it is mentioned that we cannot use the starting position as the terminating position over here. Uh, so that is, that is mentioned. The entrance does not count as an exit. So we cannot do zero, so it will be two in this case. So let's see. So we see an accepted answer, which is one and two uh, for both of these test cases. And let's test for the third one as well. 
uh, which is this. This should be minus one because I cannot exit from the starting position. So there is only one exit in this case. This should be returned as minus one. So if we were concerned about the complexity of this particular problem, so since we are using a BFS approach, complexity uh, BFS on an adjacency matrix rather, on an adjacency matrix. So this can be of the order of V square, where V is the number of vertices, or V into E. So uh, this is kind of like if we have M into N complexity. So this is somewhat like M into N complexity. So, um, and this should be running properly uh, with the help of BFS. Um, we can, this problem can also be solved with the help of depth first search and the code becomes a little bit smaller. Here, since here we are using BFS approach, so we are using a queue to, to check whether each step of the queue is a proper step or not, and whether it is in the matrix, and we terminate if we reach the either of the end positions. Okay, so, so if we were to um, run this particular code and submit it, So this gives uh, a, a run like a proper answer. Um, this should not be a point of concern. Uh, mainly the code should be working and should be passing all the test cases in the runtime provided. Um, just like I said, this can also be solved with the help of DFS approach. So uh, this can also be solved with the help of DFS. So in this case, with like we do not have a queue, we should have recursive calls to that DFS function. And the recursive calls will be of like, um, if we were trying to have a function, so the recursive calls will be like i plus one j, because i plus one j will try to move it on the right hand side, uh, a kind of i comma j plus one. So this will be on the up, up direction, dfs of i minus one comma j. This is on the left hand side, and dfs i comma j minus one. So all these steps are can be used in the DFS recursive strategy. So that's all for now. Hope to see you guys in the next video session.